I sent an email out and at times I do these technical moronic things. I, I must have triple clicked because I sent out an email, the same email. It simply said, what's the biggest challenge your business faces? And I sent the same email out three times in the same day. What was fascinating is in certain cases, the same person answered multiple times with different challenges. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question, what has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling, the business psychologist, the author of How to Hire the Best, and your co-host on the Profit by Design podcast. Weekly, my co-host, Mike Bruno, and I bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests, who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real-life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. At Tap the Potential, we know that you want to be freed from the constant demands of your business. In order to do that, you need a business that supports your life. The problem is you have a cash-sucking business taking over your life, leaving you frustrated and discouraged. We believe work supports life, not the other way around. We understand you're paying a team and you're still having to do it all. There should be accountability. It shouldn't be this hard, which is why through our proprietary coaching system, we help thousands of business owners just like you have more time for what's important to them and grow profit by 300 to 800%. Here's how we do it. First, take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Next, meet with our success team lead to debrief your results. Then join our Better Business, Better Life program. By the end of your first year with us, you will have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than you've ever had before. So take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment so you can stop working so hard for so little return. Take your life back. Profit Designers, today we get to bring you another interview with one of our favorite guests, Mike Michalowicz. Mike is here with us today to talk about his latest book, Fix This Next. Mike is a former small business columnist for the Wall Street Journal and the former business makeover specialist on MSNBC. Over the years, Mike has traveled the globe speaking with thousands of entrepreneurs, and he's here today on the Profit by Design podcast to share the best of what he's learned. Profit designers, at Tap the Potential, we are on a mission right now to be a positive force in social media during trying times for all of us entrepreneurs. In that regard, I would love it if you could help us out. We really want to get behind any of you who are doing good things in your communities, showing up and leading with love. If you are doing something to keep your team together during this time and you're sharing it in social media, or you come across another entrepreneur who is being a gift from their gift in some way that you notice, please use the hashtags lead with love and be a gift. Our team at Tap the Potential is on the lookout in social media for those hashtags, and we will be reposting those social media posts from the Tap the Potential social media. Let's all lead with love, be a gift, and shine bright during these trying times. Mike, welcome back to the podcast. You are our only guest who has been with us for three episodes so far. The triple, the trifecta. I am so honored to be back here, Dr. Sabrina and Mr. Bruno. Yes. Thank you for having me. How are you, pal? I'm good, man. Good. And you have the distinction of being guest number one when we launched the Profit by Design podcast. So we have talked with you about Profit First. We've talked with you about Clockwork. And today we get to talk with you about your latest, greatest book, Fix This Next. To get on your show, I just got to write books. So I got to turn up the heat a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, Mike. It's hard to get on the show. Write, write more books. You know, it's so funny. I think I told you how this came about. I can't recall. So you both may know it takes me about five years to write a book. And uh, it's not all writing, it starts off with the hypothesis, testing it 
asking other companies to experiment with it, doing the research, blah, blah, blah. You know, the actual writing, you know, fingers to the keyboard is an intense six or eight months for me of just documenting everything. But there's collection of information. So five years ago for Fix This Next, that's when I started it. I sent an email out and at times I do these technical moronic things. I, I must have triple clicked because I sent out an email, the same email. It simply said, what's the biggest challenge your business faces? And I sent the same email out three times in the same day. What was fascinating is in certain cases, the same person answered multiple times with different challenges. <laughs> Their biggest corporate challenge in the morning was sales. At night, it was a marketing system. And by the, you know, in the afternoon, it was their vision. And that's when I had the realization, my gosh, the biggest challenge business owners have is even knowing what their biggest challenge is. That became the inception for Fix This Next. That is so true. I talk to so many entrepreneurs who start with us at Tap the Potential and their biggest complaint is, I start working on this and then I have to do this and then I have to do that and nothing ever gets finished and I have this business full of loose ends and I don't know where I'm supposed to focus. Help me figure out where to focus. We hear that over and over. And when you came to Breakthroughs on the Bayou two years ago and you debuted your work around Fix the Snacks, we were calling it, you were calling it something different at the time, but essentially you were telling us about the business hierarchy of needs and you were already starting to talk about, and this is the part that's so fascinating to me, is that when it comes to our own survival as human beings, we are pretty much wired to know what we need to do. If we're thirsty, we feel it and we know to go drink water or something. It doesn't work that way when it comes to business. We are not attuned to what our business really needs. So that's the brilliance of the business hierarchy of needs and what Fix This Next is based around. So can you speak to that? Yeah. So your point exactly is it translates from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And Maslow argued exactly what he said, that we have an instinctual wiring for what he argued is five levels of needs, the foundation being physiological needs, breathing air, drinking water, eating food, then safety needs, shelter, protection from harm, and the highest level self-actualization, loosely defined as living life's purpose. And what he argued is that anytime a base level need is compromised, we revert to the base. So Mike Bruno will get this. We live in New Jersey. Like someone ran out behind me and put a plastic bag over my head and wrapped duct tape around it, which is quite possible in New Jersey. <laughs> All of a sudden, I will revert to trying to tear that bag open because my physiological need of breathing air has been compromised. Well, in business, I found there's a five levels of needs in, in business. But to your point, we're not neurologically wired into our business. Therefore, we don't have an instinctual response. Yet many business owners do. They say they, say they do. They're like, oh, I trust my gut. We need to do this. Oh, my gut says I need to do that. We jump around. Our gut is very poor at guiding us through our business. Now, one anomaly is if we do a repetitive task and we get a skill set at it, the, the instinct then becomes actually powerful because we can assimilate based upon our history of experience around something. Maybe I've done a thousand sales calls. I can assimilate, oh, right, my gut says the sales call is not going well because I've done so many. But in entrepreneurship, navigating entrepreneurship, it's defined by exploring the new. We're constantly going into new space. That's called growth. So how do we develop a compass to find our way through it? I translated Maslow's hierarchy of needs into a business hierarchy of needs. That's what I call it now. And it's five levels. It's as follows. Foundationally, every business needs sales. That's the creation of cash. If you have no sales, you have no oxygen for business. It is suffocating. But we simply need an adequate degree of sales to support the next level. It's, Mike, you can probably relate to this too. When you build a structure, you don't build, you know, you don't put a foundation the size of a skyscraper and then put a tool shed above it. It'll fall within that crater. Conversely, you don't put a skyscraper on a tool shed foundation. It will crush it. So these have to work relationally. Well, once you have sales, we look at then uh, profit. Profit is the creation of stability for an organization. Warren Buffett, who said, as the tide goes out, you see who's swimming naked. You know, as the recession goes out, you see which businesses were not focused on profitability. Businesses are getting wiped off this planet permanently, so they didn't focus on profit. But once you have adequate profit, then we focus on order. Order is the creation of organizational efficiency, where there's no dependency on the linchpin or any linchpin, particularly the owner, the ultimate linchpin. Once that's satisfied, the next level is called impact. It's the creation of transformation. This is where business is not in the business of transactions, just generating money. It's in the business of those transactions, shifting lives of those customers. And the highest level is legacy. Legacy is the creation of permanence. And what was so fascinating about my research here is this is where business owners told me something that I never expected. They said, there was a day that I realized I was never a business owner. I've always been a business steward, meaning I had a responsibility to bring an entity to life. But the existence of this entity is more important than my involvement in the entity. 
and that's legacy. So these five levels play out at all times for business. They're always active, just like you and I, are, we're all breathing right now without thinking about it. It's automatic. So automatically, we have to be satisfying all these levels. The question is, where do we need to apply the fix next in our business? And it's always within this hierarchy. Start the foundation, work your way up, pinpoint where you're not compromised, where that thing's not adequately satisfied, fix that, and then go through the cycle again to find the next thing that needs to be fixed. You know, what I think is fascinating about that, at Tap the Potential, we work with a lot of established business owners. We don't typically work with startups unless a business owner that's transitioning to a new business, but they have a lot of business experience. But the majority of our clients are established businesses. They've been around 10, 15 years or more. And there is the desire to be at the higher level of the business hierarchy of needs. Like somehow, because we've been in business for so long, we should be up here at the impact or the legacy level in the business. And that's not the case all the time. And often it's not the case. And there is no shame in discovering that your business's greatest need is down there in the lower levels at sales or profit or even the creation of order. Yeah, you know who actually went through that realization? Amazon. The mighty Amazon was, before the COVID virus hits, working at the impact legacy level. It was just a clicking machine. They were tweaking stuff. COVID hits, they had to go right back to the sales foundational need for their organization and repackage the entire organization. They had to prioritize essential products. They had to shift how they're selling. The entire system changed. They had to then rush to the order level to get the right people in the right place. So every business goes through cycles. There is no shame in adjusting because that's the necessity. It's just like a human response. If someone puts a bag over your head, there's no shame in trying to breathe. It's necessary. And sadly, many small businesses in particular try to skip levels. In this environment, I see in our own neighborhood here, some businesses that say we have to have great impact. We have to care for our community. We have to give until it hurts. The problem is the till it hurts part. Now we have multiple businesses that we're giving to the community that are now closed. They're out of business. They gave so nobly for two or three weeks and that are wiped off the planet. They can never give again. The right thing to do is give in a way that's fair to the customer, but fair to the business. That's how you have to bring about sustainability. So the foundation, the business hierarchy of needs, sales, profit, order, that's all about what the business must get in order to be able to give impact and legacy. So we have to do those things. We have a responsibility to do those things. Yes. You know, I talk a lot about veggies first, which is based on the profit first thinking that we have to, when it comes to our own self-care as entrepreneurs, we have to first put on our oxygen mask. We need to do every single day to take care of ourselves because so many entrepreneurs coming into COVID-19 are in a state of entrepreneurial burnout. They've just been grinding and pushing and pushing. And so they have very little reserve. And this is what you're speaking to in terms of just giving to the community. But on a personal level, they have very little reserve energy. And then we get hit with a major crisis like this. And then there's just, you know, the entrepreneur is having to figure out, what do I do? I have to pivot. I have to adjust. I have to deal with all these stressors and challenges. And there's just not much there. So that veggies first is about taking care of yourself first, your sleep, exercise, meditation, those are the things that are going to have tremendous impact on mindset. And it also applies in the business. We have to do those things in the business that make the business sustainable. Mike Bruno and I talk about sustainably profitable businesses and designing sustainably profitable businesses. That is critical in order to be able to give. So in terms of the business hierarchy of needs, if we don't have sales, if we don't have profit, we have no margin, nothing extra to give. And then then there's a huge stressor like COVID-19. You get what you're describing, Mike, where businesses are going under because there's no cushion. There's nothing there. We just gave it all away. Yeah, it's the ultimate sin, I'd argue. It's funny, I'm speaking with so many business owners right now as we go through this and uh, I always conclude or start by simply saying, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to sell into this market. And to some people, that's a shocker to hear that. And I'm like, you have a responsibility to be profitable. And they feel, but that's not appropriate. But it's the only way you can sustain. In fact, it's the only way you can be of service to your clients too. These very, I shouldn't say very, there's these less than scrupulous businesses entering the market. When there is crisis, there's some opportunistic folk enter the space because buyers are going to buy. They may buy in a new way, but buyers are going to buy. And now I see these good businesses, these noble businesses that want to care for their customers who are simply saying, you know what, 
we're not going to sell because it's inappropriate. It's unfair for our customers. So the good people are shirking the responsibility. The less than scrupulous people are inserting space. And those buyers are going to buy. It's actually a disservice. If we, as a good business, is not selling, the buyers are going to buy from someone else. We actually have to push out. We have to elbow out the bad competition. So in this market in particular, you got to sell. You have to service. You, you have to be profitable. And I want to hearken back to a quote from you from episode one that has been burned in my brain. Was it the one when I said, can I borrow five bucks? I need lunch. <laughs> no, it was when you asked me for a thousand bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. I said I need a big lunch. That's right. <laughs> so you said our clients and customers crave for us to be profitable. Yes. Say more about that. Yeah. So customers will never say those words. Like, like Mike, when you're selling a project, I'm sure you've never had a customer say, hey, for that job you're doing, can you ramp up the price a little bit more? I really want you to take advantage of me. Can you milk me for every dollar I'm worth? You know, they will never say that. But here's what customers will say. When you do that project, I want the best of you. I want the best work. I don't want you distracted trying to make money somewhere else because you're not making enough money and you're not focusing on me. I want your focus. So the, you know, to care for customers, to be focused on them, the only way is to not be panicked about where the next dollar is coming from. So customers will say they want your focus and attention. And the only way to do that is by being able to eat your vegetables first in your business, by having profit. Yeah, I think what we see now in the landscape is there's a lot of emotions being brought back into the business model, right? So business owners are getting very emotional. Maybe they don't know what to do. And maybe they've, you know, they think that they're in this legacy stage now when they really need to regroup, go back to the beginning, like you just said, Mike, and the way that you outlined it is concentrate sales, making sure the business is profitable, making sure you're taking care of your own backyard, right? Because you can only give so much. You're just giving away till there's nothing left to give. And you've basically become irresponsible, right? Because now maybe you're incurring more debt. So your responsibility maybe to yourself, to your family, to your family's financials, then you have employees and, and it just collapses. Everything collapses. Yeah, what we're experiencing now, I've called the big hairy shift. Make sure you add the F there, the shift. <laughs> <laughs> the, the world is, the needs are under a massive change. And there's some businesses that are just trying to do business the old way and are frustrated, hey, it's not working anymore. The smart businesses are saying, where are our needs now? And adjusting accordingly. So- we have a responsibility to sell. We also have a responsibility to sell the right way into the new form of needs. And I'll tell you, the, one of the shortcuts they find it is simply to ask. Like I emailed my prospect and customer list now eight, month, eight weeks ago from this recording. So just when the COVID virus was breaking out, I emailed my list and I said, things are changing. What do you need now? The number one response was not a certain business strategy. I was, I was expecting, how do I market or how do I sell? The number one request that came in back from my prospect list was, I am lacking confidence. I am frozen up. I'm frightened. How do I gain confidence again? So we went to a rapid development and now deployment of a thing we call the confidence course. So we rolled it out immediately. And, and there's a way we did it to test it first through a beta process. And it's out and running. I've never done self-help books. I've done business help books, but never self-help books. But realize there was a need change afoot. I think we all need to do that. We need to ask our clients how to serve them. Because some businesses are responding to this by just trying to drive home what they've always done, including my Chevy dealer. I bought a Chevy there a few years ago, and apparently this company is trying to jam a car down my throat because I got an email about every three days saying, we're ready to change your oil and we're ready to change your car. We'll drop one off in your neighborhood. I don't know if this is a shock or shocks. I don't need an oil change and I don't need a new car because I'm not freaking driving and no one else is. <laughs> so, you know, haha, there's a death to what's going on. I think we simply need to ask our customers, what do you need now? Yeah. What are your greatest challenges now and where are you struggling? You know, Mike, I just want to acknowledge you because I'm sure you've heard this in other settings, but one of the things that I was concerned about as COVID-19 hit is what is going to happen for our clients at Tap the Potential? And I started ticking through my head of our different clients and how they would be impacted in their different industries. And what I was so pleasantly surprised by as we started getting on our Better Business, Better Life program calls with our clients and hearing one after the other saying, I have cash cushion. I can get through the next three months. I have my vault. I can get through six months, even if you know we have no sales, whatever. And it's due to profit first. And you know, profit no. first is a big part of the fix this next because profit is that second rung in the hierarchy. 
that kind of thinking that these business owners have been using for some of them are fairly new, just a year into Profit First. Some of them have been doing it for several years now. And we had Dr. Nancy on a Facebook Live, Dr. Nancy Trimbley, and she said, you know, we're kind of hesitant to talk about this in our, you know, out there in our entrepreneurial communities, but we who do Profit First, we're not all that stressed. And so I just want to thank you because I remember years ago when you called me, I was at another conference and you called me up on the phone and you said, I want to start a movement. (laughs) And you started talking about profit first. And I was like, holy smokes, this is going to be big. This is going to be something that has an impact, has legacy. And I just want to acknowledge you because that is something that is at that higher level of the business hierarchy of needs. Even as you know, we're all talking about, we have to pivot and we're all having to reconfigure how we sell and paying attention to the need. You did something very important that sets entrepreneurs up to be able to weather a crisis like this. And that's you. Thank you. That means the world to me. Congratulations on doing it too for you. And every entrepreneur is doing it. It's hard to gauge exactly, but we estimate, we think it's relatively accurate. There's about 350,000 businesses now that have implemented Profit First. And we can translate that from book sales. So there's over 350,000 books out in circulation. Plus there's people that are learning the system without ever reading the book and doing it. And those businesses, you know, they had the courage to do it. The scary part right now is the I told you so situation that I see happening is some businesses are going to struggling owners and saying, well, you should have. I told you so. And that's not going to solve the current problem. The nice thing is Profit First works in a dynamic environment and a struggling environment like this. We still can extract profit from our business. In fact, more than ever, it's important. Now, you got to start differently. You got to start slowly and methodically, and you got to be testing out different offerings and shifting around your sales. So Profit First now, in its new form when we're in crisis, is not just about extracting profit and margin from your existing stuff. It's dynamically creating new while exploring and experimenting with profit with it and finding that alignment between sales and profitability. Absolutely. So I'm happy to say Profit First is more applicable now in this environment, but it's now going to be a new flavor of this dynamic testing as we roll out, you know, what we roll out. Well, and above all, Profit First is a habit. Yeah, it's a habit. And there's, this is a great time to start a new habit because everything is topsy-turvy in the world anyway. So let's put a new habit in place that's going to serve us going forward as we reconfigure, restructure these businesses. The other piece of this that I want to talk to in the context of Fix This Next is Pumpkin Plan, my all-time favorite Mike Michalowicz book. I have been quoted multiple times saying that I believe Pumpkin Plan is right up there with Gone with the Wind in terms of... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now that's funny. Thank you. I don't know about that, but thank you. Right now, Mike's holding up the check that he just wrote Sabrina for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, $10,000 coming my way. So Pumpkin Plan on audio, and I know you have re- recorded it. You're going to be releasing a new updated version, but that is one of the best. It is the best business book on Audible. Thank you. To listen to Mike read that. But where I'm headed with the pumpkin plan is just what Mike said about emailing his list and saying, what are the needs that you're having right now? Understanding as we're restructuring our businesses, understanding the needs of our top 20% clients that are responsible for 80% of the revenue historically in the business is a powerful way for us to move forward. And Mike, one of the things that many of our tapped potential clients have really latched onto as they're looking at restructuring their business is understanding mathematically that if we increase revenue from our top 20%, by 25%, we can replace the revenue from the 80% that we may have lost or that we may just not want to do business with because they were PETA, pain in the ass clients. So all of a sudden, we have space and time now. Isn't that the thing that entrepreneurs always say? We don't have enough time to work on the business. Now there's time to get on the phone and call those top clients and find out what their needs are and what their challenges are and how we can serve them. And you know what you just shared about your course on confidence, that is a perfect example of pumpkin planning during this time. Thank you. Yeah, so we, the word develops not right. We just put a term to something that already exists, but it's really effective. I call it sell the tell. And this is the new process to cater to that top 20%. Again, I shouldn't say new because this has been around. This is our flavor of it is go to your existing client base and find out what they, they ask for, what they want. 
Now, the interesting thing is they won't give you direct feedback. Like, so I think it was Henry Ford. Who, if I asked my clients what they wanted or customers, they would have said a faster horse. That is what they wanted. They wanted a faster form of transportation. They just were confined within the horse because that's the only thing they could imagine. So our job is to bring imagination to it. Ask your customers what they want and they'll tell you they want something that's faster or better or quicker or stranger or weirder. They'll give you the er and figure that out. Then we got to ideate, come up with ideas around it. What we do with the sell to tell is once we had a concept like this confidence course, we said, hey, I heard you're lacking confidence. What if there was a way to rapidly gain confidence and was leveraging a mechanism already within you? So this is based upon just some basic research that people aren't confident or not confident. There's actually an internal confidence recipe. Everyone has confidence. It's the application of it. So everyone is confident, like drinking water. How do you extract that confidence and then apply it to a category where you're not confident? So I said, I'm developing this course around this idea, but it's not developed yet. I am going to develop on the fly. It's going to be bumps and bruises. I'm ultimately going to sell it for the number you think you're going to sell for $1,000. So I am looking for 10 beta users to go through the development process with me. As I roll it out, uh, you'll get early access to it. And you can give me direction on what's working, what's not, so I can cater to your needs. And if you're interested in being a beta user in this idea, it's only $250. Now, here's the power of the sell to tell. I develop nothing. I can do it in a single communication, email or whatever. And then I can gauge by the simple response. Do people buy it or not? If no one buys it, it's the concept is not persuasive enough to sell. Improve the concept. If I can sell it on that, then I have something. And on the confidence course, it sold instantly. The other things I've done, I did another project. No one was interested. It was beautiful because I spent no time developing it. The other part was great. Then I started developing it on the fly. So as people sign up for this beta, I start developing it and I'm giving it to them. They're inoculated. They're prepared for the bumps and bruises. And they start giving me feedback. So I'm modifying and enhancing it right to their specific needs. Then when I go out to roll out and sell for $1,000, I have 10 users already. I have 10 testimonials for brand new product. So I made revenue immediately. I've proven the concept, enhanced it as I moved along. And then at rollout, I have people to back the sale by testimonials. So I think in this environment, that's perhaps the most effective way to roll out a new service or product by selling the tell. That's brilliant. Powerful. Very powerful. So Mike, I want to circle back to talking about Fix This Next. And I just want to give our listeners some context to understand. Mike has written multiple books on entrepreneurship and Fix This Next really pulls together, I think, your work that you have been doing all these years. And when we read Fix This Next, we understand where we need to focus, what's the next most important thing. And then you have profit first, you have pumpkin plan, clockwork, all of those support at different levels of the business hierarchy of needs. And so profit first is great for if you're working on profit, pumpkin plan is great for the sales side of things as well as order. I actually think pumpkin plan is the foundation of it all. Like if we don't pumpkin plan our business, we have no strategy. That's actually my favorite book too. My favorite one to write yeah. because it, was, it still had the edge. I like to you know, write books that are true to my character and that one still had the edge. I still do it in all my books, but I've become a little more mainstream in the way I present. So a little more like, you know, kind of once you get your pop song going, you kind of follow that formula over. And I know Mike was a huge fan of NSYNC, Mike Bruno. So <laughs> big, yeah, I saw the tattoo you had of Justin Bieber on your back or Justin Timberlake. Or and Justin Bieber, which was kind of ironic, <laughs> kissing, by the way. And I like to have that, once you find your voice, is to repeat the voice over and over. I really found my voice in Pumpkin Plan and, and went to the distance. So it was particularly fun to do it there. Yeah, well, it, it's been an honor with Tap the Potential to be a part of seeing all of your work develop. And I want to give a shout out to Stacey Seguin on the Tap the Potential team. She's amazing. She is featured on page 147, Fix This Next, along with one of our clients, Steve Bousquet at American Landscape and Lawn Science. And just their experience here at Breakthroughs on the Bayou two years ago when you rolled out the business hierarchy of needs and the assessment. Steve really grasped it. Stacy grasped it. And they connected right afterwards. And she worked with Steve and a member of his team using the Fix This Next assessment. So we're founding fixers at Tap the Potential. We believe so strongly. You're actually featured right in the book. You're highlighted as, as a founding yeah. fixer. You're one of the few. So thank you. Yeah, dad gum it. We're, we're back there. You, you roll something out, Mike. Tap the potential is all over it. I love it. It's simply because we see over and over the impact that these services have on our clients and how they transform lives. 
where I'm going with this, though, is I really want to encourage our listeners to go buy a copy of Fix This Next and, and start reading it. And I also want to let you know, at Tap the Potential, we have been gifted with 50 copies of Fix This Next. We actually have been gifted with 100. We're giving 50 to our clients. We have an extra 50 to give out, and we're going to do something fun with it. For those of you who take our entrepreneurial burnout assessment at Tap the Potential, and you have a debriefing with our success team lead, Darren Hopman, we will send you your very own copy of Fix This Next. First come, first serve, because we have 50. And I think they're going to go like hotcakes after this. So to sign up for that assessment, it's free. Tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. So Mike, how can our listeners follow you and stay on top of all the good things you're up to? So Mike Motorbike is my website. So well, it's Mike Michalowitz.com, but no one can spell that. And I totally get it. So my nickname in high school was Mike Motorbike even though I'd never driven a motorcycle, which is the irony part. But uh, there, you'll get to my site. I have lots of resources and tools. You can learn more about Fix This Next and other resources there, mikemotorbike.com. Mikemotorbike.com. Mike Bruno, what are you taking away from today? I'm just really surprised that pumpkin plan is where you found your voice. I thought it was in that toilet paper book. (laughs) Yeah, toilet paper was like, that was my sophomoric anger stage. (laughs) Mike, can I share my takeaway is that Mike Bruno has a tattoo of Justin Bieber and Justin (laughs) Timberlake on his back. I knew it. I just never thought it'd become public. Thanks for the back rub, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. So Mike Bruno, that tattoo, everyone's going to have an image now. He's a softie in his heart. (laughs) (laughs) Some new things we didn't know about Mike Bruno. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for this, Mike. It's been very enlightening. And gosh, dog it, keep writing. Thank you. If you're like most business owners, you have a cash-sucking business that's taking over your life. After the first year in our Better Business, Better Life program at Tap the Potential, you'll have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than you've ever had. Get started. Take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Profit by Design podcast Facebook group. Share your thoughts on today's episode, ask us questions, and let us know what you want to hear about next. Visit our website at ProfitByDesignPodcast.com to access resources from our sponsors and tools we've created for you. Subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to right now. There's a subscribe button right there. Go ahead and hit it so that you always get a notification when we release a new episode. And finally... Share our podcast with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. Thanks again for listening. This is Real Life Business. Keep your chin up. Keep moving forward. You got this.